All right, welcome back to Round Ball. We have an a, an interview with an absolute legend, Gino Ariema, the coach of the women's basketball team at UConn, the 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 best coach I think ever to coach basketball, in my opinion. But coach, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Although, you know, there's a ball headed guy up at uh, Ann Arbor that would probably disagree with that. But uh, <laughs> you know what that. <laughs> Is that not uh, all the way, coach? Is that ball all the way? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that bald man, uh, Phil Martelli, he came on our pod the other day, quick, and he was talking about how he turned down a job, and then that's when you got the job. Is that true? Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, he used to run a basketball camp um, for. Uh, uh, for girls, actually, um, and it was the biggest girls basketball camp in the country at the time. Um, and uh, Kathy Rush, the legendary coach at Immaculata, <clears throat> owned the camp, and she hired Phil to run it. So he got to know all the coaches in the country. You know, he got to know every single coach that came through there. And, you know, one of the coaches asked him uh, if he would want to go down and be an assistant coach at the university of Virginia. And he said, you know, he said, no, um, but he told them, he said, you know, you should talk to this guy. And that's why, you know, they asked me. So I think Phil was trying to get rid of me. I don't think he was doing me any favor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's kind of how all that happened. He's like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't, I don't need Gino anymore. Let's just get him out of here. He's yeah. like, he got paid like 12 grand or something for it. He's like, ah, he can take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the job was going to offer me 13,000 at the time. Uh, this is 1981, which is, you know, I thought was pretty good. Cause I think I was making 400 at the, you know, at high school. So I thought yeah. that was a pretty big jump. <laughs> was it, uh, was, didn't, weren't you like coaching, uh, at, at high school or and then at college, but like you had a separate job, like stocking shelves or something too. Yeah, there was a uh, th there was a lot going on at the time. You know, um, I was still in school, just finishing up, and you know, the guy asked me if I would if I would help out, and that's kind of how I got even got into coaching in the first place. Uh, but when I was working with Phil. Um, uh, I eventually got a job as a, um, as a teacher and athletic director at this really, really, really small school. Um, and, you know, really the only reason why I did that was so that I could, you know, that, that I could coach. But before that job came along, um, I mean, I did all kinds of things, you know, like I worked in, a, uh, I worked in a steel mill, I worked. I worked construction with a bunch of guys that were my father's friends, a bunch of Italian guys. One of my craziest jobs was actually working like 11 PM to 7 AM in the supermarket that a friend owned, his father owned. And I was in there with a bunch of crazy guys, you know, and you can imagine what they were doing at 11 o'clock at night, you know, when all the boxes and, you know, all the stuff has to be stocked on the shelves. And then I would go, you know, I would go to class, after that, get a little bit of sleep, and then we'd have practice, or we'd have a game that night. Um, so it was—I uh, don't know. One time, I was uh, uh, when I was Phil's assistant, I was coaching the JV team as well. And I was so delirious; I don't know what we were playing that night. And I remember I'm arguing with a ref, and he looked at me and he goes, "Yo, dude, you—you you really want to be doing this?" I said, "Why? What's your problem?" He goes, you know where you are? I said, yeah, I know where I am. He goes, I don't think you do. I was standing at the free throw line. <laughs> you went all the way out to the free throw line? I was, I was standing at the free throw line, and he's looking at me. He goes, you sure you want to be here? I said, yeah, I want to be here. And I didn't realize where the hell I was, you know. Uh, <laughs> you thought you were still stocking shelves at that point. Yeah, you know? I, I, I didn't know. You know, I was going to say, I must have taken – I must have taken some of what those guys were doing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, I got a question for you. So, like, I mean, everybody knows it's it's between you and Pat Summit for, you know, 1A, 1B, wherever you want to rank them, 
women's college basketball coaches. How do you get the motivation each year to be like, because like so many national championships, so many wins, how do you get the motivation each year to kind of, you know, restart with a whole new, I mean, not, not a whole new team because obviously women's basketball, you know, they stay longer, but like, how do you just get that motivation to keep on going year after year with the success that you've had so far? Uh, it's, it's not always, uh, it's not always easy. You know, um, it, gets more and more difficult every year as you can imagine you know with uh, all the changes that are that are taking place um in how we have to go about our jobs you know how we have to recruit how we have to coach uh what's going on with the transfer portal and all this crazy stuff that's going on it gets harder and harder because it's becoming less and less about basketball and more and more about all the other stuff that goes into um you know, trying to keep your program going, but in, in the end though, it always comes back to, um, one, I don't want to go back to stock, stock and shelves. So that, <laughs> that, you know, this job pays a lot better. Um, but I think that the winning anymore almost isn't even the point, you know, because how much winning is enough? You know, we, we, we won 11 national championships and we've been their final four, 14 years in a row. I mean, oh, these, great. These, uh, I was say 14 and then you hit me with the row. Yeah. These, these things are like ridiculously, um, you know, improbable things to, to think about. So it's not even about the wins anymore. It's just like, you know, if we go out and recruit and I ask a kid like, what, what's your goal? Like, why you want to come, you know, you want to come to Connecticut and, if the first thing the kid says is, well, what's the NIL deal? Then I don't want to recruit the kid anymore. You know, like I don't. So, but if a kid says, I want to win national championships, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to, you know, be one of the best players in the country. I want to go do this and do that. So now that kid comes to school and you feel like, all right, well, if I want to keep getting these kinds of kids, then I got to start understanding, which I did about five, six, seven years ago that you have to win national championships so they can get what they want. Yeah. And then, and then you can get the next kid because you go, Hey, look, you know, so when I tell kids, <laughs> I asked the kid recently, I said, how old are you? And the kid says, um, 17. I said, uh, all right. I said, you know, the last time we weren't in the final four, you were three. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great pitch, that's a great pitch. That's a great pitch. <laughs> you know so when you when when you think about it it's like well if i want to go to final four i probably have a pretty good chance if i go to connecticut so that's kind of become you know because as i've said before winning another national championship you get up in the morning and say i want to win another national championship yeah it's great because of all the stuff that goes with that but in retrospect Looking back, it's not going to change my life one iota. One more. What's the difference between 11 and 12? Yeah, 11 and 12. Is... <laughs> you know, really, there's no difference. You know, I mean, things aren't all of a sudden going to change. You know, I'm not going to be making like, you know, college football money. <laughs> you're already, yeah, it's like, I, that's a good question because you're already the best 14 straight, like, Final Fours. Have you ever been offered, like, like since – Honestly, you're probably the best franchise, like, if you think about it. Like, you, obviously, I'm not, like, I'm not watching college, women's college basketball every night, but I know everything about you. I know everything about UConn. I watch you guys in the Final Four. I st I do, actually. I would love to come to a game, so I just invited myself to one. Yeah, you um, <laughs> anytime, anytime. Um, have you ever been offered, like, a, a job in men's college basketball, the NBA, or, like, the WMB, anything like what have you been offered other jobs after this, all the success? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, when it, <clears throat> when the WNBA first started, you know, 96, I guess it was. Um, yeah, I had some conversations with, um, the people in the people in New York. Um, and I, I, I wasn't crazy about spending my spending the summer coaching basketball. You know, I, I have a summer routine that I follow and that's what I do. And, and, you know, I love that. And, and plus I have a, you know, I, I think 
I have a better situation than 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 that. But as I got older, uh, college men's opportunities came along, and you know, when you get a little bit older, you you start making decisions more about you know what's best for your family as opposed to always what's best for you. And like when your kids are real little, you know, meaning like they're in grade school or whatever, you don't care. You just pack them up, throw them in the car and let's go. Yeah. Um, but as they get older, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. So I came to like the 11th hour, you know, uh, literally like it was almost midnight and I had to get back to this AD and, um, you know, my daughter says, um, to my wife, I w- they were in the other room and she said, you know, I'm just finishing up school. You know, dad was going a lot when I was growing up. And now that I'm out of school and we get a chance to hang out and do stuff, you're going to like pack up and move halfway across the country. Like, how's that going to work? And, you know, you start thinking, like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> you couldn't, have, you know, you couldn't have said that, you know, two days ago when I was trying to figure this one out. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, 11 o'clock when I'm getting ready to call the guy back and say, yeah, I'm in. Um, so you, co- I've come really, really close. And then there was an NBA opportunity where when I left, when I got on a plane and left, I had taken the job pretty much. Really? Yeah. And then uh, something happened and I just, you know, I had to, had to back out. And um, so, yeah, it's been really, really close at times. But as each year goes by, it gets less, less and less and less wanting to you know, upend your life to, to do that. Yeah, um, I know like I could I'm never good. coach men's college basketball now in the world that you guys live oh. in right now, you know, oh, the transfer portal and all that shit. Now, the, the whole, you know, the whole money issue and, you know, they used to pay players under the table and everybody knew who was doing it and who wasn't. Now everybody pays everybody and everybody's okay with it. So what the hell, you know, maybe, why, it's lot, maybe it's a lot better. I don't know. Them. This is why you call it how it is, you know? <laughs> I don't know. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> no, I mean, it used to be, like, we got the kid Paige Beckers, right? She's the number one property, you know, she's probably the number one property in all of college sports. All right? She's mm-hmm. got 2.2 million followers. So when people hire her to do stuff, to post stuff for her, she moves the needle a little bit, you know? So she gets paid a lot of money to do that. And that's the way it was supposed to be. You know, you, you, you get paid for what you bring to the table. Okay. Now, you know, as I read this stuff, it's like you go up to some dope playing AAU boys, you know, high school basketball in the summertime, that guy, he he can't put two sentences together, whatever the case (laughs) may be. And somebody's going to pay him just to come to school and then say, yeah, but you know what? You're going to do this, this, and this. It's really bullshit. He's not going to do anything except play basketball. Yep. You know, so, you know, just call it what it is, and then everybody can go on, you know, on, on living their life. But this idea that it's name, image, and likeness, no, it's not. It's I got this much money, and if you want to come play for me, here it is. Again, Gino calls it how it is because yeah. that's what we – Hunter, haven't we said that, bro? Like, you're in it right now. Like, people aren't getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to – posts on Instagram that they're going for a car wash. Like they're going to, <laughs> they're going to Gonzaga because they're getting paid to go there. And they don't, no one, like no one's buying more car wash soap because fucking one guy went there. Like you're so right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say about it is like, like you said, coach, like it was already happening. So like, is it really like a big difference that is just happening like in the open now? And then the other point I would make is like, Colleges already had this money. Like, why not give a little bit to the players? I mean, I see your point where it's like it's made recruiting so much harder and stuff like that for you. I can only imagine, but definitely for men's basketball, like that's like a pitch now. Like you said, like when a recruit, when you go up to a recruit and their first question is like, how much NIL money can I get? It's like, you know, like, do I even need to show you around the campus for real? No, you don't. You don't have to show. But I don't listen, Hunter. I'm, I, I, I'm all in for them getting paid. Uh, I'm I'm all in for that. Uh, I think it's great. And I think they, they should get whatever they can get. Whatever someone's willing to give them, I think that's great. What I don't like about it is that there's no 
there's no like, for instance, when you go to the NBA, you're going to get paid and you're going to have to perform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you don't perform the way they want you to, they're going to trade you or they're going to stop paying you what they're paying you. And that's it. Yeah. Well, if you go to college and you get paid and you suck, you're still going to get paid. <laughs> yep. And then here's the worst part. If you decide I don't like it here anymore and you leave, you took all their money, didn't give anything back. And you get to go to a different school for nothing. And then you're going to take their money. And then you just keep like now that you can transfer anytime you want and do whatever you want. So I'm all for everybody making as much money as they can. But there's got to be some. All right. What's the give back? Like, what am I going to give back from you? For sure. And what part of commitment? You know, they say, well, coaches can leave anytime they want. No, they can't. I got like a five million dollar buyout. So let's say I'm recruiting a kid. Let's say a kid's playing for me. You know, let's say you, you know, you were, you know, you're an undergrad and you get paid X to go to Michigan. And then you go, hey, look, I'm out of here. I'm going to UCLA. Well, you should have to do something like. How can you just leave, pick up and leave like that? For sure. That's a good point. I mean, I think the thing the NCAA can get away with, they still call it amateur sports. So, <laughs> Which, I mean, when you're a multi-billion dollar business, is it really? Right. right. The only amateurs in this sport are the NCAA. Coach, I got to go catch a bus. Um, thank Wait, you. Hunter. Wait one sec. Uh, real quick before he goes, what any advice for Hunter uh, if he uh, – all right, director. All right, go. All right, thank you. All right, man. Hunter said on the last podcast they were going to win by twenty. And who are they playing? They played Arizona State last night and they lost by thirty. How would you, how does he come back from that? Who lost by thirty? Michigan lost by thirty last night. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. They they lost by third thirty to Arizona State, and he went on. And we were, I was like, "Come on, give me a prediction, man. Give me a prediction. What you're gonna do?" And he's like, "I'm gonna score 18. We're gonna win by 20." They lost by 30 last night at, at Arizona. Uh, no, it was in it was in Brooklyn. It was like a one of those tournaments. Oh oh oh! God damn, boy, were they out the night before in New York? What the hell is going on? <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, 30 points. Arizona State had a, a real shitty loss this year, too. Like, they're they're not the best. Wow. <laughs> Doc, I would have never, never thought that. I and never. everyone on Twitter was like, oh. And he said, like, one of the players sent him uh, one of the players sent him a DM being like, oh, you said this on your podcast. And then, like. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. Um, Damn. I'll get, I'll get you. A couple, two more questions and get you out of here. But I really appreciate you coming on because you really are. And I, I like how I'm, I like you even more now, to be honest, because like I think it is kind of bullshit when team, when the coaches will be like, oh, yeah, we all I want is national championships. Like 11 and 12 really isn't what's that going to do? Diff every, you, everyone knows you're the best coach already, you know? <laughs> right. Everyone knows what you did. But so what's the difference for you guys this year now that Paige is hurt, right? Right. Right. So what's the, is that has that been a little difficult to? Well, yeah. Here's the problem, not a problem, but here's the good thing and the bad thing. Like, Paige is out for the year, right? So, uh, we also have a bunch of pretty good players, obviously left over, and um, you would think that. Well, the expectations are obviously a little bit lower. Not really, because we're still, you know, we're Connecticut and we're expected to be, you know, like you think, you think in Ann Arbor or, you know, in Michigan land, you think they, you think they give a damn, let's say if the returning quarterback ain't playing that year and it's okay for them to go six and six. Hell no. You know, it doesn't matter if they get 11 guys to show up on offense and 11 guys to show up on defense, they're expected to play in the final four. Right. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's what Michigan football is. So we played Texas the other night. They're number three in the country. We're number six, supposedly. And we're up 17 at one point, And we don't have two kids that were probably going to play like, well, Paige, and then another kid that was probably going to play 25 minutes. She's out. 
And everybody thinks, see, it's no big deal. They're still going to go to the Final Four. and they're still... So the expectations here are off the charts crazy. But it's it's better than people expecting nothing from you. 100%. You know, so it's going to be a lot harder. Who knows? You don't probably have a lot of bad losses. I don't think we'll have any 30-point losses to an unranked team. So we're not going to have that crap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No wonder Martelli didn't answer my text this morning. I can't wait to grab him. <laughs> exactly. He's probably like, oh, I can't talk to him today. He's going to give me some shit today. Well, I'll tell you what. If I was Juwan, I wouldn't let anybody talk to anybody for about a week. <laughs> the problem is Hunter's on this podcast. So it's like <laughs> – and I, I told him before, I'm like, hey, if you lose – because he because the other night they won – um, and he scored like 25 points or 31 points. Like he killed it. And he came on here is like talking shit. He's like, oh, you're <laughs> fucking good. We're so good. And then, and then, yes, I was like, you're going to have to come on again and talk about how shitty you were as well. <laughs> oh, it's unreal, though. That is but, uh, where's he, where's he going to, what are they saying? Where's he going to go in the draft? Like what, what's, what's his projection? I don't. I don't think I see. I have seen it yet, but I think it's more. They're kind of. They, I saw some uh, some reports of like that late first round, oh. um, because he's developing like the three point shot. Because you know, in the NBA now, it's oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. You can't shoot. They don't. You're just you're That's useless it. now. To That's them. it. That's it. If you can't shoot, you can't play. Yeah, and That's you it. got seven footers going out there now and hitting three. So he's he's been working on that. But, I don't know, yeah. he's obviously one of the best players in college basketball. For sure. I love watching him play. I mean, he's – because he, he he knows how to play. And, like, a lot of a, a lot of what I watch in college, too, is a lot of these kids coming out of high school, and it's not their fault. They're – they play so much – they play so many games. They They're constantly playing, constantly playing. But I don't know that they get coached enough in how to play the game, you know, how to, you know, how to think the game and, and you know, the, the, the kind of fundamentals that you have to have to become better and better and better. And uh, I, I think he's like a throwback to back in the day when guys just worked on their game all the time and, and yeah. you know, learned how to play the game mentally and physically, you know. So he's fun to watch. I mean, he's, he's really, you know um, – the, the kind of guy that, you know, coaches would love and, and, and kids can, can look up to, you know? Yeah. Like I think a lot of people, I honestly do think a lot of people, they want the Instagram highlight. They want yeah. who's yeah. going to have the most followers. Like, I feel like that's, it's probably a lot harder to coach now than yeah. it has ever been because that's all they care. To be honest, any kid cares about social media. That's just a fact. It's nuts. <laughs> It's and then absolutely. you just hope to find that one guy who just <clears throat> wants to win, doesn't care. Like, you can care about it, but you can still work hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, um, the, the NBA guys, it's all about getting paid. But it's at some point, you you know, what you see now, you know, you see all these guys leaving to go play with other really good players because they finally figured out it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's all about winning. It's all about you know, are you playing for a championship or are you just playing? Yeah. So, you know, eventually guys realize all the fame and all the money and all the, you know, Instagram and all the followers, it it doesn't match one one NBA title or one NCAA championship. You know, it, it, it's, you know, it, it's, 100%. that's, it's, it's, it's become a realization for, for a lot of players. Um, last question has yeah. nothing to do with basketball. All right. I'm from, I'm from New York. People talk a lot of shit about Connecticut. What, really? what do you have to say? Oh yeah. They talk a lot of shit about Connecticut saying that it's one of the worst States. I don't believe it. What worst so do you, in terms of what? That you, all, to be honest, all they have is UConn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's funny. You know, what's funny. When it comes to basketball, New York don't even have that. They'd be happy if they had us. The <laughs> Knicks you know suck. What? The Knicks suck. The Nets suck. Thank God. Thank God the Giants now are really, really good. 
who, by the way, that's that's what happens when you get a hell of a coach who comes in. That guy's unbelievable, right? He's well, done an unbelievable job. It's amazing yeah. what you can do with someone that like actually wants to pl- like to coach and is a good coach. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I I'm from Philly, right? So everybody in Philly hates everybody in New York because probably New York is everything that Philly wishes it was. And and Boston, <laughs> Boston, they're the most miserable people because they ain't Philly and they ain't New York, you know. So they're neither. Nice. Right. So New Yorkers, I think, always have this really high opinion of themselves and a low opinion of everybody else. Right. I'm not I'll, you. But here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. Every guy that's worth the shit that makes a lot of money working in New York lives in Connecticut. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that's so true. Because <laughs> they don't want to live in New York at all. You know, like. I got kids. I got kids here from all over the, all over the world, right? They go to New York. You know, I got five of our start off when we started our starting lineup the other night. We're from five different countries, right? It's crazy. Wow. They go to New York and they ride the subway. They go, Coach, this place is a shithole compared to what I have at home. But we all make sure we all say it's oh, New York's the best. It's oh, every, I, and you know what? There are things about New York that are the best. Yeah, that 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 this that the best city in the world and all that other stuff, and that's absolutely true in a lot of a lot of areas. But there's a lot of areas where they're the worst. Yeah. But that's but that's probably natural. Like when you're the best at, at at some things, there's probably another side of that. And and New York definitely that they they they're the, they've got the best of everything in the world for sure, and they also have the worst. Um, well, hundred percent. Because I also I'm from New York. I li- I work in New York, and I moved to Jersey because I was like, I kind of want to get out. I kind of want to get out to when not be here all the time. Um, well, here's the and here's the other part. My assistant's from New Jersey, right? She's she's from New Brunswick, and and here's the thing. And you know, Phil, like we go down in South Jersey to 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 the shore. So here's the thing about Jersey, which cracks me up. You just said, like, you live in North Jersey, probably. So North Jersey is just an extension of New York. Jersey, yeah. North Jersey doesn't exist of its own. It's part of New York. South Jersey is part of Philly. So the real New Jersey people, they got like a strip, like, you know, down Route 9 or something, whatever the hell that road is that goes from, yep. you know, New Brunswick straight across. And and other than Springsteen, they ain't got, they ain't got shit that's all their, their own. You know, they either, they, they either borrowed New York or they borrowed Philly. But other than other than Bruce, they got nothing. Hey, I think I think Sha- isn't Shaq? Shaq might be from Sh- uh, Newark, right? You know what? He might be. I don't. Well, he was a military guy, so he he lived all. Yeah, over. Yeah, he was all, he lived over, all the over the world. But um, yeah, other other than Bruce and the best beaches in the country, they ain't got shit. That's all they talk about is fucking Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a lot to talk about, man. If you've ever it seen is. a concert, obviously, it is. Um, a, you know, he's the guy. Last question, favorite, because uh, our Dave Portnoy, our my boss who started Barstool, he all he does is pizza, and he says that New Haven has the best pizza. New Haven has really, really good pizza, and you know what's funny? It's the same kind of pizza you get in pretty much the best Italian places in Philly, in New York, but. They, they've, they've carved out a reputation for themselves in the different ways that they make their pizza. But yeah. it's all the, you know, the Southern Italian, thin crust, you know, Napolitan kind of pizzas uh, that everybody loves that are the best. Like if you go to Italy and you go down, you know, in the Naples area and you eat pizza, you know, you could eat a whole pizza by yourself and not feel full because it's so thin and so, you know, so fresh. But yeah, New Haven probably. What's your a, favorite one there? Uh, I I don't I don't I don't go down there that much. But one of the one of the famous places down here, Pepe's, yeah. of, of New Haven. They they've opened the place in in Manchester here where I live in in, in Connecticut, and uh, that's that's pretty much been our go to all along. All right, well, Coach, that was an unbelievable interview. I really appreciate it. I'm. <laughs> I'm I'm coming down for a come down, a man. I'm gonna and come down you. for a game. I gotta see because let me tell you, when talking to you, it's like 
I just want to, I could sit here for two more hours. Like you, now, you take every question in depth and I fucking love it. Tell your boys, tell your boys at Barstool, you know, like they used to be like regular guys, you know, like me and you just sitting here talk. Now that they're rich and famous, they ain't got time for guys like me, you know, like, you know, so tell them next time they want to call me and do an interview, I'm going to say, you know, anyway, you got to talk to my people. I, I don't have time for you. You, you know what? I, I'm passing that along because I I'm still poor, so don't worry. I've always got time for you, Gino. All right, my man. All right, coach. I'll talk to you. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much. All right, you got it.